Hey everyone, this is Talks with Kenny, and here we'll be discussing why Kamala Harris does not want to take accountability at all. In the first clip, it seemed like uh, the reporter uh, asked her a direct question that if she believed that they failed Democrats in this issue. Here's the video. When you look back, did Democrats fail past Democratic presidents, congressional leaders to not codify Roe v. Wade over the past five decades? I think that, to be very honest with you, I, I do believe that we should have rightly believed, but we certainly believe that certain issues are just settled. Certain issues are just settled. Clearly we're not. No, that's right. And that's why I do believe that we are living, sadly, in um, real unsettled times. She's just fumbling. She's just fumbling through her words. It's obvious that she doesn't want to directly answer the question is because the Biden administration and the Democrats in general, they want to just have this perception of that. Oh, we did everything right. We did nothing wrong. Right. And to the point about the they had 50 years to do this, that codify Roe v. Wade is a it's an issue that all politicians have left. Right. Doesn't matter that they need the wedge issue to get people, uh, their voters to come out and vote. Hey, if you don't if you don't vote for us, they're going to ban abortion. Oh, if you don't vote for us, they're going to codify abortion. You get me? So they don't want to actually do any solutions or actually put anything in place to actually um, solve problems because they need the pro the very same problems to get votes for them, obviously. So it's a problem we have in politics, honestly. But at this point, I think everyone's in this country is looking for solutions. And I don't think uh, the Democrats can get by using this as a wedge issue any longer because there's more pressing issues than abortion. Honestly, I don't really think abortion is a top issue right now. I think the top three is like crime, inflation, and um, and the economy. Honestly, honestly, Kamala Harris is is the if you wanted to get a pers like a case study of why affirmative action is a bad idea, Kamala Harris is is, is the like perfect example to the T. And this is the main reason I, I don't agree with affirmative action is because just solely based on the fact the fact that she happened to be born a woman and happened to be a minority, she got this position. Like she failed upwards, right? And you, you can tell, like in the in this interview, here's the next clip. But they're frustrated. Police reform is stalled. I believe that we need. To, you're right. I mean, but again, the, this is the the. There is a cycle, there is a connection between what we are, what we want to have happen and the power of Congress to actually make it happen when it comes to changing the laws, when it comes to writing and then putting in effect laws that create accountability and greater fairness in our system. No, like you can tell, she doesn't know what's going on. She's not, she's not confident in her answers. She's, she, she's, she's like, oh, we, the Congress is good. She talks as if she's not the vice president of the United States. She talks as if she's like me and you, like like me and you. She talks as if she has no power, no nothing. She said the Congress, we try to push what we do, but that's the point of Congress. You can't have, all, there's not a lot of power. The three branches of government check each other, checks and balances, obviously. And you have to do what you can. But the problem with the Democratic Party is they don't like to meet in the middle. They just like to my way or the highway, and you're not going to get anything done that way. There has to be compromise. There have to be negotiations that's going on. And when Democrats have power, they do it every time. And this is why every time they get in, uh, get the presidency, they end up losing some seats, a lot of seats. It's because they don't know how to uh, meet in the middle on things. When they have power, they just like ram through our agenda, ram through our agenda. We don't want to compromise with the Republicans. right? And even on their own side, you've seen with uh, Manchin and I believe Cinema. Even with them, they don't know how to negotiate. It's just like, oh, we're going to manipulate you into our, our side. We're going to force you to vote with us. We're going to we're gonna like blackmail you on damn near. Like Cinema was getting, uh, Mansion was getting, calling calling them traitors because they don't toe the party lines. Everyone has to do the, like agree on the same thing. And no, every, every constituent there, every representative there is representing their state, not an agenda. And because Mansion chose to do what's best for his state, He's getting hounded by his own party. Sad, isn't it? And then the same people who who said they can't get anything done, done they'll say, oh, the minority, the, the country's supposed to be ruled by the majority. Yes, it was a majority. Manchin and Cinema voted with the Republicans. It's a majority. But, the, but because they feel like they have more members of a party, they believe, oh, the American people totally agree with us. No, 
you can, if you go by percentages, they only agree with you 51% of the time. That means the other 49%, you have to listen to minor, the minority too. They haven't been able to pass anything bipartisan. America wanted to go back to a sense of normalcy. And I think what the midterms are going to show us today is whether Americans still believe that bipartisanship is possible. If not, they're going to go vote one way or the other. I don't think it's going to be split votes like it was in 2020. But hey, guys, let me know what you guys think in the video. Comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.